Hey guys, Ivan here, and let the games begin, hell yeah! The Olympia Press Conference starts tomorrow, that's gonna be September 12th at noon, and of course this is American time, this is United States, Nevada, Las Vegas time. Of course you should convert that to your own time zone, in Serbia it's gonna be about 9 p.m. As soon as Mr. Olympia Press Conference starts, if something interesting happens, of course I'm gonna report on it. If nothing interesting happens, I'm just gonna still report on whatever happens, but don't expect to watch, I don't know, Brandon Curry and Rolly Winkler arguing <laughs> who's gonna win the throne. No, we're probably not gonna watch that. That's probably not gonna happen. This is not Phil Heath and Kai, this is not even Phil Heath and Rami, this is not Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman, or whatever. It's gonna be just Rolly Winkler, who barely speaks English, and Brandon Curry, who is super nice guy. So, not a lot of drama. Not a lot of drama to expect. But it is what it is. With this kind of depleted lineup, it's not gonna be super interesting to watch this Mr. Olympia, but it's exciting because I have no idea who can win it. And uh, the defending champion is not gonna be there. This man right here, Sean Roden, with his most recent physique update, in which he looks surprisingly veiny, vascular, shredded, for sure. He looks good, he looks impressive. Would he be able to defend his title this year if he came like this? I don't think so. I think he looks a little bit too stringy. Now, if he came super shredded, peeled, like nobody else on that stage, with good legs and with fine back, why am I saying that? Well, because Rolly Winkler has no back and Brandon Curry has no legs and neither of these two guys can get conditioned like Sean can. So, I think he did have a legitimate chance to defend the title. Not easy. Not easy. It wouldn't be easy for him. Hell no. Brandon is coming strong. Rolly is coming strong. Even Bonek. We'll see what happens. But uh, if Sean Roden actually came, if he wasn't banned, it would be interesting watching him trying to defend his title. Many people consider him like only one time Mr. Olympia, and it seems like that's gonna be the case. But if he had a chance to defend his title, would he defend it? What do you think? Sean Roden, your current Mr. Olympia champion, is not gonna be competing this year, but he will be in Las Vegas, he will be at the expo, and this is the photo of himself posted by his coach, Chris Asiro, and Chris says, five days out of Mr. Olympia, guess what year? And of course, he never looked this fat five days out of Mr. Olympia. So this is obviously recent, this is 2019. So if you take a look at him right here, he doesn't look that stringy. His arms look rather big, rather full. His legs are on point, everything is there, I mean, pretty much the, the, your average Sean Roden. His face looks like he aged a couple of years in the past year. He looks like five years older than last year. I think that stress really wore him out, but his body really responded quite nicely. He looks good, he looks good. And if he competed, it would be a really good battle. And uh, if I was a batting man, if I had Sean Roden on point, perfect, against Brandon Curry, who is really good, and uh, Roy Winkler, I don't know, if I was a batting man, if I had to bet, I guess I would say Sean Roden. What do you guys think? I just think he's too complete, you know? These guys have obvious weaknesses, obvious glaring weaknesses, like back and legs. Sean's back is not super insane, but it is good. Sean's arms are not like Brandon's arms, not like Rolly's arms, but they're not bad arms. They're not as bad as Rolly's back is or as Brandon's legs are. So for that reason, I think he would have the least amount of negative points. And I think he would probably win the Mr. Olympia. If he was on like he was in 2018. That was the year when he beat Phil Heath, one of the best bodybuilders of all time. So what are we talking about? But that's not gonna happen, that's not the case, he is banned, he is not gonna be competing, unfortunately, no, we're not gonna see Sean Roden on stage, it's gonna be between Brandon, Rowley, William and so on, but you gotta admit, Sean Roden is looking great at this point, and hopefully we will see him competing next year at the Mr. Olympia or at any other IBB Pro shows or maybe even post Olympia. If he keeps competing after the Mr. Olympia, that's gonna make those post-Olympia shows really interesting. It's gonna make bodybuilding fun after the Mr. Olympia. I hope to see that. I hope to see him on stage and Big Grammy and even feel heat. That would be amazing, but I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Let's just hope for the best. But as far as the Mr. Olympia 2019, this here is another contender. 
This is his most recent update. So, Cedric McMillan, the potential Mr. Olympia winner, as some people are saying, if he came completely shredded, he could win the Mr. Olympia. That's what everybody keeps saying. The truth is, we never really saw Cedric shredded before. And at this point in time, this was posted only four hours ago, he says last day of work, and then head to Las Vegas tomorrow. So he is working a day up to the Mr. Olympia. And not only based on that, but based on his face. Is his face looking like he's ready for the Mr. Olympia? <laughs> hell no, hell no, this is a fat face. Look at the double chin, triple chin. Triple chin on Cedric McMillan. Let me say it just right now. Cedric is out of top six. That's what I think. He's gonna be like eighth place or something like that, like last year. He was eighth last year, and with his depleted lineup, we were hoping for him to be higher, at least like top six, top five, or something like that. But looking like this, out of top six, eighth place, that's a little bit aggressive. Maybe he's gonna be like seventh place. But can he beat guys like Juan Morel, who's gonna come completely dry? I'm sure of that. Or John De La Rosa, who is possibly gonna come shredded like he was at the Puerto Rico Pro? Can he beat Steve Kuklo? Can he beat Luke Sando like he wasn't able to at the Arnold Classic? Not Arnold Classic Australia, Luke was off, but if Luke comes on, he's gonna destroy Cedric. Based on his face, and based on the fact that he is working only a couple of days out of Mr. Olympia, I mean, I understand, you have to work or whatever. Sure, I mean, that's fine. But if we're talking about the Mr. Olympia, about bodybuilding only, not about their personal lives, I don't care what your job is or whatever, but apparently he's not taking this too seriously, unfortunately. He is not able to because his job is forcing him to not be completely focused on bodybuilding. If he was completely focused on bodybuilding like 100%, if he had that Dorian Yates drive, that Ronnie Coleman focus, that Jay Cutler determination, the Phil Heath mindset, if he was like that, he could be our Mr. Olympia. But unfortunately, he has another job. He's a military man. And that is very important work, for sure. He has this youth program and he's very focused on that. So unfortunately, he cannot give it his all to bodybuilding. And that really sucks. I'm really sad because of that. Now, Cedric was able to place very well. Even when he wasn't at his best conditioning. He never pretty much is. He never is super conditioned. So I really wouldn't be too surprised if I saw him cracking the top six, because he was able to do it before, with his genetics, with his shape, with his small waist and huge arms and complete physique overall, with all that um, class that he brings, that presentation, a beautiful presentation and the energy that he possesses and so many different things. I mean, he can crack the top six, but based on this face, based on this triple chin on his face, I don't think he's gonna be at his best, nothing like that, and uh, I think he's gonna be off, like he's always off at the Mr. Olympia, and that sucks, I'm really sad because of that. If he comes like really off, really, really off, which is pretty much possible, based on that face, these guys, for example, Patrick Moore, who is actually making his Olympia debut, can actually beat Cedric. Now, that's not a huge chance, but this guy is coming strong. This guy is focused. He knows what he's doing. He's coached by Chris Asito, just like Cedric, just like Sean, and many other champions. Patrick is uh, definitely coming strong, and he looks great in this most recent physique update of his. He looks... His face also doesn't look super dry, but the conditioning is there. He's gonna be full and conditioned. Now, he's not as thick as dense as some of the other guys to be in that top six, but... I think top 10 for him is a great success for a Mr. Olympia debut. Out of 16 guys, 10th place out of 16 best bodybuilders in the world, it's really a huge achievement. And I think he has a legitimate chance to crack the top 10, but we'll see what happens. I think it's gonna be the case. He really looks symmetrical and complete and conditioned and full and everything. 10th place this year would be a huge success and in a couple of following years, I'm sure we're gonna see this guy jump in placement. He's gonna be a future prospect. If everything goes well, he's gonna do great in the future years to come. Now, regarding the classic physique Mr. Olympia, we have this <laughs> physique update of Brian Ansley. And honestly, guys, you know, I'm a huge fan of Chris Bumstead. 
I really love his shape, the shape of his body. I'm not a fan of Chris because of his personality. I don't really care about his personality. I followed his vlogs and I followed Brian's vlogs as well. They're both great guys, but I don't care about that. But physique-wise, I really preferred Chris Bumstead. I think his physique was uh, unordinary. It's just special physique. And it is very, very classic, very, very aesthetic, very, very impressive. But I have to be objective. I have to be honest. Based on this photo right here and a couple of other physique updates that Brion posted, whew, I don't know, I don't think Chris is gonna be able to beat this. This is too complete. Look at the details in the quads, look at the peak on his biceps, the size of those arms, the forearms, the triceps, the V taper, the abs, the chest, and also a very, very good back. I mean, I was expecting Chris to make some crazy progress this year and to come perfectly peeled, more shredded than Brian. I was expecting Brian not to make progress, I was expecting him to come the same, or even worse. But to be honest, I underestimated him and I have to be objective right now. I have to say that phew, he's probably gonna repeat. I think so. Because Brian, he really improved this year. He was very complete last year and that's why he won, but he actually improved. He got a little bit more polished. It looks like he gained muscle. I don't know if he really did that, but he really looks bigger and fuller and overall more impressive. Let me show you Chris's physique update. I mean, I shouldn't be making predictions uh, like a couple of days out of Mr. Olympia, because we're gonna know for a fact what's gonna happen, but it seems like Chris is not even gonna be in top two. At this point, his legs don't look shredded enough. I'm thinking that uh, he wasn't able to push himself too hard because of those kidney issues. He didn't want to flare those up again. And I'm sure he's going to make an explanation after the Mr. Olympia if that actually happens. If he's out of top two, top three or something like that. He's going to explain it. He's going to say that he wasn't able to push the envelope that hard. But he seems a little bit watery, a little bit chubby. He doesn't look as shredded as Brian. Still, the structure of his body is better. I prefer his structure. But he didn't get shredded enough. He is not as big, as full, as complete and uh, as shredded as shredded as Brian. It really sucks. I was really cheering for him, for, for his physique. I'm not a fan of his personality or something like that. I'm not a fanboy. I just love the shape of his physique. And I wanted to see that represented the classic physique Mr. Olympia. But if he cannot bring the shape, then uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian is just better. And this year, early Brian made some improvements. And he's much more shredded than him. And he's more complete. And he's fuller and bigger and everything. So he's probably going to be Brian again. And I don't know if Chris is going to be in second place even. Maybe that's going to be somebody else. For example, Henry Pierano. Henry competed at the Portugal Pro this year in the Open. And he took sixth place. Very good sixth place. Now he's coming strong for this classic physique Mr. Olympia. And I think, I think it seems like he's gonna challenge Brian. Could be, could be. And uh, I don't know, Arash Shragbar is looking improved. George Peterson is looking awesome as well. So Chris, he may very well be out of top five, top six. I mean, that would be really horrible. That would be a disaster if you ask me. But it really seems like some of these guys are trying harder. Henry Pierano really looks good, he really looks awesome. So we'll see what happens. I may be wrong, I may be wrong at this point. Maybe Chris will somehow dry out and come shredded at the Mr. Olympia. Who knows, it's possible. But it just doesn't seem like that at this point. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. What do you guys think? Am I wrong? Please tell me I'm wrong. I don't know, I just don't get the vibe. I just don't really get the impression that Chris is looking like a Mr. Olympia winner. I think these guys are pushing the envelope harder. I think he's just scared to do it because of his health issues. Some people thought that he may even retire after those kidney problems, but he kept competing and maybe he just is keeping it low, low key. He's not pushing the envelope hard. Or I may be wrong. Maybe photos are not doing him justice. Maybe he's gonna look better on stage under the lights and everything. Maybe he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia. But I just don't get the impression anymore. I was hoping for him to come peeled and perfectly shredded and peaked and everything, but I just don't get the impression. 
And for the end of this video, guys, I think it would be just fair to mention our man's physique Mr. Olympia champion, Brandon Hendrickson. Now, can this guy win the Mr. Olympia again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's gonna challenge him. I don't know who is his competition. I have no idea. I don't follow man's physique, I'm gonna be honest with you. But he looks great. He looks really good. Not a big difference between this man's physique and classic physique, guys. Some. Some. But his legs are looking on point. His abs are looking very symmetrical and developed. His arms are looking good. He looks ready. He looks ready. And I wish him good luck at the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> That's all I gotta say for man's physique. I'm sorry, guys. So that's gonna do it for this video and guys don't forget to watch the press conference tomorrow, 12th September at noon, whatever your time zone is, just calculate it. And uh, I'm gonna see you tomorrow with another video, possibly after this press conference. Hopefully something will happen, hopefully we're gonna have a fight, <laughs> most likely not, but I'm sure something interesting will happen. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video, like it if you enjoyed it. And please, subscribe to my channel for more Mr. Olympia uploads, updates, and all kinds of bodybuilding-related stuff. Thank you very much, guys. All the best. Bye-bye.